West Ham won Manchester United 3, what Oli got wrong in the first half but right in the second. For cheap, good quality football jerseys, go over to www.jerseyfever.com where they have the new season's jerseys available from just $25. A link will be left in the description and if you use the coupon code ALANTISFOOTBALL you'll get 5% off. So going into the game, David Moyes set up his side in a 5-4-1 with Fabianski and goal, a back three of Balbuena, Ogbonna and Cresswell with Masuaku and Kufal as the wing-backs as Rice and Suchek played as a midfield double pivot. Bowen played from the right of midfield and Fournal started from the left and Haller started as a centre-forward. Solskjaer used his usual 4-2-3-1 with Henderson starting in goal, wan and Tell as the full-backs, either side of Maguire and Lindelof at centre-back behind a midfield double pivot of McTominay and Pogba, Van der Beek played in Bruno Fernandes' usual role with Martial to his left, Greenwood from the right and Cavani playing as a side centre forward. So from the start of the game we saw David Moyes deploying the same defensive system that he used in West Ham's 1-1 draw at Old Trafford back in the lockdown period. This consisted of a 5-4-1 shape with a midfield four sitting incredibly narrow with Haller in front of them. United's 4-2-3-1 becomes a 2-4-3-1 shape in possession and therefore West Ham's front five acted as a box around United's midfield double pivot of Pogba and McTominay forcing the ball wide to the fullbacks from where the West Ham wing-backs would use this as a trigger to push up the pitch and stop the full-backs being able to move the ball forward. In the first 15 minutes, United dominated possession, but rarely were able to move the ball into West Ham's defensive third. Any time a pass went into Cavani or Martial, who dropped into the space behind the West Ham midfield, one of the back three would move out to close them down as soon as they received the ball, often leading to turnovers and not allowing United to put together a combination of passes in the West Ham half. West Ham were very effective at stopping United playing through the centre of the pitch. When a pass went into Pogba or McTominay, West Ham's midfield four were well organised and would step out to prevent them from making a forward pass into Martial or Van der Beek between the lines. Before I go any further, make sure if you enjoyed the video, you give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and share the video if possible. Follow me on my social media accounts for more content and check out some of my other videos like my most recent video looking at a Red Bull takeover at West Ham and how that would change the club and the many Manchester United videos that I have. Those will all be linked in the description below. Out of possession, United fell into their usual two banks of four in their 4-4-2 shape. However, as West Ham rarely ever looked to play out intricately when in their defensive third, United weren't really able to press aggressively high up the pitch as they usually do. Instead, they allowed West Ham centre-backs to have the ball in the middle third, probably in order to draw West Ham further up the pitch, which in turn would leave more space in central midfield when there was a turnover, which would allow United more space to then counter-attack into. West Ham were looking to exploit the space in behind the relatively high United back line by having Four Nows and Bowen sitting between the fullbacks and centre backs and making runs in behind the blind side of the fullback down the channel into a crossing position from where they could then look to whip in a ball into the box for Haller or the wide attacker on the other side. West Ham did get the breakthrough and once again it came from a corner which was the issue that United had against PSG in Southampton. The zonal marking system that United have been using seems to leave them massively vulnerable at the front post and like Bednarak did last week, Rice was able to wander into that position and get a flick on without any United player in their area really putting them under pressure. The flick on caused massive problems United don't have anyone in the back post area strangely enough despite using a zonal marking system which allows Suchek to run off his marker and and tap in the ball into the empty net. So United went into half-time behind and hadn't created much of any substance, struggling to move the ball into the final third. This is because when the opposition sit narrow, compact and are organised with their pressure on the United midfield double pivot, United struggle to work the ball in between the lines with McTominay, Maguire, Lindelof and the two centre-backs far too slow when making an incisive pass, often hesitating when on the ball which gave West Ham's midfield a second to move across and close off the passing lane. That is the difference between top-level deep-line playmakers, the ability to see those passes and then the confidence and ability to make them, which is something that McTominay definitely struggles with, often loitering on the ball for far too long and playing the safe pass just to circulate possession rather than play a penetrative pass to move the attack forward. However, despite the lack of forward passing ability being a main issue, Solskjaer's possession shape didn't help either, so the midfield two were unable to get on the ball turn and play a forward pass because they were essentially being boxed in by the West Ham front five. What should have happened is that United's double pivot became a single pivot, with one of Pogba and McTominay moving out of this area into a position wide of West Ham's narrow midfield. Van der Beek could have done the same on the other side, and this would have meant that Bowen and Fornals would have had to stay wider and deeper, giving the centre-backs more space to move out with the ball and giving the single pivot more space as West Ham's midfield became stretched. In the second half, Solskjaer did make the personnel changes that he needed to make. 
bringing on Fernandes and Rashford, which immediately changed the game. United at the start of the second half were having more joy, moving the ball into the final third, and this is because West Ham fell into the trap of inviting pressure. In the first half, the midfield and forward line sat higher up the pitch together and were assertive when moving out to pressurise United's midfield double pivot, giving Pogba and McTominay little space on the ball. However, in the second half, West Ham dropped back about 10 yards, allowing McTominay and Pogba in particular to get on the ball more often, with West Ham's system also naturally becoming more stretched. As players fatigued and moved back into shape a little slower, United had greater success with feeding balls into Fernandes and Greenwood, who would drop in between the lines of the West Ham system, which enabled United to get the ball into the final third more often as well. The changes paid off as United equalised when Fernandes was set free down the right channel and had the ball control and decision-making ability to refrain from playing an early cross and instead moved the ball to a more central position on the edge of the box before laying it off for Pogba to perfectly cool the ball first time with pace past Fabianski. United seemed to get a wave of confidence from this goal and West Ham's shape seemed to be drifting deeper and deeper, allowing United to have more space in the middle third. The second United goal was just as good as the first. Telles whipped in across behind Greenwood, who had drifted into a centre forward position in the box, and in one touch he managed to flick the ball 180 degrees and on the swivel half volley the ball into the bottom corner, completing a five minute turnaround. United's momentum continued and with West Ham's lack of pressure on their deep line players and their system not as narrow and compact, United were able to feed the ball into Fernandes a lot more often as he became the side's central creative focal point. Here he is positioned in the half space in behind Rice and Suchek and with one pass from Maguire into him, this allows him to then take a touch and then find Rashford's excellently timed run straight through the gap between Ogbonna and Cresswell allowing him to run into a one-on-one -on -one position from where his shot hit the outside of the post. Rashford was making some fantastic central runs in behind the back line and when he was found by Mata's perfectly weighted first time through ball, he ran through and dinked the ball over Fabianski, wrapping up the victory for Manchester United. Overall, this game was a perfect example of a game of two halves. In the first, West Ham were organised, compact and squeezed high up the pitch to stop United being able to play through the centre of the pitch. In the second half, West Ham fell into the trap of dropping deep wary of the space in behind, which coincided with Fernandes, Rashford and Mata coming onto the field, which combined with Pogba now being given more space in those deep areas, allowed United to seamlessly transition the ball from the middle to the final third with a few vertical passes through the centre of the pitch, usually involving one of Fernandes' Or Pogba in the sequence before Rashford's runs were able to be found by Mata and Fernandes, gifting United some great high value chances which they took and gave them the victory. The second half was definitely one of United's best halves this season and also showed to me why Pogba has to evolve into a deep line playmaker as he's one of the best at playing those transition passes into the likes of Fernandes and Rashford between the lines. So thank you for watching, if you enjoyed that video remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and put your thoughts in the comment section below. Also check out some of my other videos that I've linked in the description below as well. And remember to follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more content.